Skyjack's Log, New Horizon, April 15th, Entry 4. I can't say how glad I am to be seeing this damn place disappear below the clouds. A week down in that cursed jungle is enough to give any pony reason to retire. I don't even want to count the number of insect bites, rashes, or outright irritating things I've picked up down there in those trees. Had to be quick about leaving, too. Locals looked at us like we were ghosts by the time we made it back to the docks. Looked at the cages and crates we were hauling with us, and an even stranger set of expressions. But hey, if they say that place was truly cursed, then surely something would have happened while we were in there. If there weren't any kind of traps for Celestia's sakes. If some pony all that long time ago didn't want their treasure to be looted, then they would have guarded it with more than cheap words and stupid folklore. Of course, there was the whole situation with the guide. Stripes didn't take too kindly to that either. I'm just damn glad we got out of there before they tried anything stupid. As for what we recovered, well, Raven says all six pillars are to be kept on ice. Don't know why. There were only some rocks. Very expensive rocks at that. I reckon each one's worth an absolute fortune. And all of them together? <laughs> well, let's just say that there's a sunny beach waiting for me out there somewhere. Still, that's only if the contractor comes through. All we know about him is that it's some pony is willing to pay an awful lot to ensure these things get to them and no pony else. Raven's staying quiet about the whole deal, though. All she's saying is that we'll get exactly what we're owed. Captain's word's fine by me. She'd never let us down before, that's for sure. I just hope there's not too much trouble, because I have to admit that I just want to be rid of the damn things. I don't know. As nice as they look, there's something about them. Locking them away in the crates didn't make it go away, either. It almost feels like they're watching us. I ain't the only one who feels that way either. Some of the other crew said they saw one move, and more ponies say that even saw one glow. I can't say I've seen any of them do anything like that myself, but no pony on this ship can lie while being so serious. Just ain't like them. Usually it's all laughter and uncontrollable snickering. One thing's for sure, it ain't natural. Nothing that comes out of that jungle Ever is. Every pony's ears shot up to the sound of screaming from behind them. In an instant, every set of eyes turned back to see no sign of the yellow pegasus that had been standing there weeping moments ago. Before any of them could think, the loud scream faded into the wet gasp, then disappeared altogether. Fluttershy! Rainbow Dash called out in alarm before rushing to the source of the terrified scream in the blink of an eye. Despite the fear rushing in every one of them, every pony followed as fast as their hooves could carry them. Rounding the corner, they all saw Rainbow Dash hovering overhead, slowly sinking to the floor as every pony saw what was happening. Each froze the instant they saw what lay before them. What was Fluttersh left of Fluttershy's body was sprawled out over the carpet, a pool of warm, crimson ichor sweeping across the cold floor. Her eyes and muzzle were wide. Eternally frozen in the horrific contortion of her last desperate scream for help. Blood stained her coat in a series of sharp slashes coiled from her body, almost as if she'd been grouted to death on one of the great coils of sharp wire. One of the great gashes across her neck still bubbled and foamed as her nervous twitching finally faded and she fell lifelessly still. No pony said anything. Both Rarity and Starlight had the will to cover their muzzles with her forehooves, and Twilight the strength to shield Spike from the bloody sight with her wing. After only a few moments, however, every pony but Rainbow and Applejack could do nothing more than look away the latter trembling like a frail wooden horse caught in a storm. The other sustained an expression as stubborn as her personality. The former was just staring down at the bloody corpse with empty eyes. 
in all those years. Ever since flight school, I... She began, but her words cut off the sad croak. Her muzzle opened, and she looked away. She was my... Rainbow? The sound of Applejack's voice was accompanied by the farm pony's hoof on the Pegasus's shoulder, the gesture causing the cyan mare to turn back sharply. What? She growled, the words escaping through grit teeth. And Applejack recoiled as if she had just seen some kind of venomous snake. What are you any gonna say? Look at this. What are any of you gonna say? Rainbow Dash shouted, lifting into the air with one slow beat of her wings. This time, it was more than Applejack who recoiled. Every pony shifted back as Rainbow's pained eyes scoured each one of their equally traumatized faces in search of an answer for what she knew she'd never find. Then, something else broke the silence. Once again, all ears turned instinctively as the hollow whistle echoed through the halls. What an equestria was that? Applejack asked glancing back at Twilight as all four earthbound ponies formed a defensive circle. I don't know. I... I've never heard anything like it. Twilight responded weakly, her eyes scouring the gloom in a panic. I'll tell you what it is. Whatever did this is still here, and I'm gonna put a stop to it, Rainbow Dash declared bluntly, her dangerous gaze directed to whatever there was something that could hide. No, Rainbow. We have no idea what we're dealing with. If it can do even this, then... Twala began, but the moment she looked at Fluttershy, her words faltered. If it can do what? Kill two of our friends? If it can... Rainbow Dash started to respond, her hooves pointing at Fluttershy's body. Then the Pegasus paused and narrowed her eyes. As something about the dead Fluttershy's eyes caught her attention. In those cold and terrified spheres, she saw a faint flicker of blue dancing across the darkness. Then it disappeared with a sharp flick. Only then did she look hard and see the same light reflected in Fluttershy's lifeless stare, darting through the shadows. But she wasn't the only one to see it. Get back, every pony! Get back! Twilight called urgently, spreading her wings and forcing every pony behind her as her horn flared. Without a word, Rainbow Dash darted forward towards the vibrant blue flicker. Rainbow, no! called Twilight. Yet before she could magically reach out for the Pegasus, Applejack leaped forward and grabbed Rainbow's prismatic tail in her jaws. No! Let go of me, AJ! Let me go! Rainbow demanded as she kicked and squirmed against Applejack's hold. For a long moment, the farm pony's grip held firm, only to falter as one of the Rainbow's wild kicks struck her right in the face. With a grunt of pain, Applejack staggered back into twilight, and then a flash, Rainbow disappeared into the darkness. She So too did the dancing blue glow flash from sight as she vanished. Rainbow! Y'all get back here right now, you hear? Applejack called out in a frightened frustration. Then she reached forwards. AJ, no! Twilight shouted, magically pulling the farm pony back. No? What do you mean, no? I ain't sitting back while some pony else is... Will you all be quiet? As swiftly as Applejack began to protest, both the farm pony and Twilight were cut off by rarity. Just stop. Please, just stop. She demanded, almost looking as if she were about to rip out her own mane. Hey. Every pony look. Spike added suddenly as the baby dragon stood high over Twilight's head and pointed to the gloom Rainbow had vanished into. Every pony looked ahead as the series of bright blue flashes silently shattered the shadows. Then something in the gloom gave an animalistic strike, and the flashes abruptly stopped. It remained for a long time, not but the distant sound of the storm left to fill the blackness as every pony slowly crept forwards. Then there was another bright blue flash, for a brief second, a vague shape of a pony was silhouetted upon the wall, as if something far larger tore it apart with a vicious set of sickled claws. Rainbow's muffled scream barely met their ears as her attacker gave an angry shriek. This time, there was no cry from their bold friend. 
and then a call for her to come back. Every pony bolted forwards. Magic hooves and whatever they had, they defend themselves with ready. And yet there was not a single sign of their friend, nor the thing that had taken her. Rainbow Dash! Celestia, damn it! Rainbow! Come back! Applejack called into the silent darkness. Nothing responded but the far-off rumble of thunder as the farm pony called again and again. Her pleas finally stopped by twilight. Applejack, please. Stop, she's... She's... Twilight pleaded, only to have her voice fail as she saw something dart through the gloom. This time, the blue light pulsed and beat like some kind of glowing heat, labyrinthly illuminating a vague serpentine shape in the pitch darkness. Then the thing shifted with an unnatural swiftness as if turning itself towards them before disappearing as if no more than a candle snuffed out in a damp cave. Run, was the only word Twilight could murmur as she slowly backed away from the invisible danger. Her words were met with a mix of confusion, rage, and fear from Applejack. Applejack, just run. We can't fight this. We need to run, Twilight shouted. Adrenaline threading through her veins as the instincts to flee took over. Another terrified demand from Rarity reinforced the Alicorn's instructions, and the thought of something terrifyingly silent creeping towards them in the darkness was enough to get every pony moving. Finally, Applejack followed her strong limbs, carrying her right up to the others in no time. As much as the idea of running away while one of her friends could still be stuck out there gravely injured sickened her, she knew she could help no pony, if she ended up the same way, of course. Ultimately, Twilight and the others were right. They could not fight this without knowing what it was. Nevertheless, running through the endless maze of corridors, tunnels, and arches once again felt like it took hours. Yet it wasn't long enough before every pony's exhaustions forced them to stop. The moment they did so, both Starlight and Rarity collapsed against a wall, gasping for air as Twilight and Applejack struggled to stand. From the depths of the corridor behind them, something shifted, and there was no sign of the glowing entity. Finally, managing to recover enough to talk, every pony looked about, each keeping a wary eye on the shadows. What an equestria is that thing? Rarity finally asked, a simple question undoubtedly on everybody's mind. It's downright evil, that's what it is, Applejack stated simply. Her expression still a mix of anger and sorrow. I don't know, but it was big. And those lights must be some kind of magical or biological luminescence. Whatever it is, it's like nothing I've ever seen or heard about in any of my books. Twilight explained. The lack of understanding threatened to send her into a panicked frenzy. Yeah, probably because the darn thing killed everyone that saw it. Darn it. We shouldn't have messed with what we didn't understand, Applejack said firmly. Oh, and what, Applejack? Do you think Fluttershy brought that thing in here with the intention of it slaughtering two of her best friends? Not to mention herself? Rarity snapped scornfully, but Applejack just shook her head. I ain't saying anything like that. I'm just accepting that's how it is now. I ain't letting this thing get any pony else. I owe the others that much. The farm pony responded. But, wait, what about Rainbow? What about us? Can't you just teleport us all out of here or something, Twilight? Spike asked nervously, as he timidly peered over Twilight's head. No, I've never teleported more than four ponies before, and I have no idea where Rainbow is or if she's... Twilight began, then paused with a shudder. Besides... We're right in the middle of one of the most magically unpredictable forests in Equestria during a thunderstorm, she added, working herself into a frightened fluster. At the Alicorn's words, every pony's eyes sank to the floor, the cold and unforgiving reality ensnaring them in its tight grip. Then an uneasy silence once again fell over the group. Look, Rainbow's a smart girl. If she got away from that thing, she'll find us, Applejack finally spoke up. Got away? Applejack, did you not see what happened to Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie? We'll be lucky if any of us get away at this rate. Rarity snapped again, fear forcing her usually elegant voice into a frantic cry. No, this thing isn't taking any pony else. 
But if any of us want to make sure that's the case, then we need a plan. Twilight suddenly declared, breaking free from her thoughtful stupor and looking up at each pony that remained. Each terrified face looked at her with a glimmer of hope, trusting that she would lead them out of the danger as she always did. All Twilight hoped for was that she could. What do you have in mind, Sugar Cube? Applejack asked, placing a hoof on Twilight's shoulder supportively. Well, what do we know? Twilight asked thoughtfully. Um, there's a terrifying monster hunting us through the creepy halls of an old ruined castle in the middle of nowhere, and we have no way to escape. Spike answered timidly, sinking further behind Twilight's head with uh, each hostile fact. No. Twilight corrected abruptly, stomping a hoof. We know that there is some kind of hostile creature hunting us, yes. We know it grows rapidly, and it's already bigger than us. It's stronger than us, and it uses light as a lure. Possibly as a weapon, too. We also know it has no problem... Twilight's words trailed off as she shivered. No problem tearing ponies apart, either in defense or to hunt. Yeah, I think we get the idea, Twy. Why don't you... What do you want to do about it? Applejack pressed, as calmly as she could. We set a trap for it. That's what we do. Twyla responded bluntly, before elaborating. What we know is that it's an animal. Therefore, it must base its actions purely on instinct. Predatory by the looks of it. We have the intellectual advantage. Applejack stepped back. Her expression thoughtful as she considered the idea. Both Starlight and Rarity seemed to do the same, the former of the pair agreeing first. Sounds reasonable, Starlight added, her own mind calculating the idea a similar way to a mentor's. Rarity just offered a silent nod, her words as frozen as her terrified mind as she did so. Meanwhile, Applejack took longer considering the option glancing back into the darkness before finally opening her muzzle to respond. You want to set a trap for that thing? She asked skeptically, and at Twilight's subtle nod, she continued. Well, all right. Go do it your way, Twy. But if any point, it looks like the plan of yours is going to south. We're running right out of the darn castle as fast as we can, you hear? Twilight nodded in acknowledgement of the terms. So, what exactly do you have in mind? She asked again, unable to hide the subtle urge to get back to her friend's attacker as she did so. We need to get to the throne room. Follow me and I'll explain. Well, I'd answered as she began moving once more. And every The castle throne room was by far one of the largest chambers in the ruins, surpassed even the towering shelves of the library. For sheer scale. Its far wall was home to a pair of shattered thrones, and the area below was a mass of rubble and fallen pillars. Gaping holes in the crumbling roof allowed the pouring rain to beat down on the stone floor, and a large hole in the far wall was repeatedly illuminated by bright flashes of lightning as the bolts lanced across the pitch black sky outside. More water trickled down from the shattered glass windows that flanked the central space on either side, and their tattered rags of taspetries waved and shifted in the wind. Twilight was first to enter the room, horn glowing as she carefully scoured the place for any danger. Behind her, both Starlight and Rarity walked backwards, their eyes fixed on the darkness behind them as it retook their position as the light of their horns chased it away. Applejack glanced up at the balcony, on the upper edge of the room, then at the many holes and crevices that had been torn in the walls. So how do you reckon we do this? The farm pony asked, as Twilight stopped before one of the room's fallen pillars. She glanced up at her friend as her magic sparked to life, and she began to levitate some of the smaller pieces of rubble around. We try and block every entrance other than the ones on the sides as best as we can. Those on the outside don't matter as much, because we know it's in here with us. She began as she started stacking rocks up against the room's many archways. Y you don't know that. A thing could be halfway to Ponyville for all we know. 
Applejack responded. Look, I'm doing my best. Besides, it's an animal, right? It'll stay where it knows there's food. Twilight responded with a shiver. That's if all it wants to do is eat us, Applejack added, the sick image of what it had done to Pinky still in her mind. Doesn't look like it followed us. Or it did, and it's just being really quiet about it. Starlight said simply, as both she and Rarity trotted over. Twilight just nodded as she finished blocking up the majority of the exits. Then she motioned for Starlight to help her shift a large pillar that shat atop the rubble pile. Applejack, Rarity, can you see what you can do about moving that stuff over there? She instructed, nodding to another pile of rubble on the opposite side of the room. Spike, can you keep an eye out for anything? And if you see one flicker of light, tell us immediately. Don't worry, Twilight. The dragon responded nervously as he tentatively stood tall on Twilight's back. Applejack moved to where Twilight had directed, motioning for Rarity to follow. Then both Twilight and Starlight began to shift the giant stone pillar and levitate it in the air. Looking over to her mentor's face as the huge stone was propped up against one of the side rooms, Starlight paused. Twilight, she asked weakly, drawing the frazzled alicorn's attention. How exactly do you intend to get this creature where you need it? The idea nagging at the back of her mind in the worst way possible. Twilight sighed. Pained look on her eyes as she seemed to have stared off into nothingness. It was clear she knew exactly what she had planned. Only now she was terrified to even consider it. Finally, Starlight's thoughts aligned and she reluctantly spoke. You need bait, don't you? She said simply, and Twilight turned her head shakily, as if the words were a painful sting. Starlight gave a weak smile as she looked up to where the pair of them had put the pillar, then to where the others were blocking off the other exits to the chamber. You're going to try and drop the pillar on it, aren't you? And that means you'll need it right there, she elaborated, nodding to the now clear center of the room. What? You can't just leave some pony out in the open with that thing! Spike exclaimed, forcing Twilight's look to sink even more. No, Spike. The only one that's going to be left in the open is me she said simply. But that only made the dragon protest even more. No, I'll do it, Starlight admitted weakly, and the argument abruptly fell quiet as both Twilight and Spike looked at her with shock. No, Starlight, this is my mess. I'm the one who needs to fix it, Twilight said, but her student just shook her head. It's no pony's mess, like Rarity said. None of us knew what that thing was. Besides, Equestria needs you far more than it needs me. I've seen what happens without you, Starlight insisted, her head sinking slightly at the latter part. Twilight took a sugar head in frustration, mumbling to herself as if trying to figure out a better way. Then she finally gave a tired groan and stomped a hoof. The moment you see anything, you shield yourself, okay? She instructed as she looked at Starlight sharply. There was no argument this time. Not that Starlight had intended to just leave herself undefended initially. She wasn't one of Equestria's most powerful unicorns for no reason. Don't worry. I'm not going to let myself end up like the others. She had admitted weakly. And Twilight placed a shivering hoof on her shoulder as she reluctantly nodded. Well, that's one side done. Rarity can move things when we need her to. Applejack said as both she and Rarity trot over. Who ever thought a situation like this would be a good motivator? The white unicorn grumbled disapprovingly. Good. Now, Applejack, I want you over there by the thrones. Rarity, you're down here by the base of the pillar, Twilight instructed, pointing out the locations firmly before adding, The moment that thing is directly under it, at both angles, you two call out. And what about you three? Rarity asked, looking at Twilight. Spike and Starlight. Spike and I will be up there, Twilight said as she pointed to one of the balconies. The second thing, it's in position. I'll put down the pillar with the help of you from the other end, Rarity. And how in tarnation do you expect to get it there? Applejack asked. And before any pony could answer, Starlight stepped forwards. 
I'll make sure it's there, she said simply, and Applejack's expression fell flat. What? No. You can't just go use some pony as bait. That thing will rip her apart, the farm pony exclaimed angrily. But after her initial wince, Starlight shook her head. No, it won't. The moment I see anything get too close, I'll put up my shield spell, and Twilight can teleport me to safety if the pillar falls. She reassured every pony, her mentor nodding in acknowledgement. Applejack's face contorted in disapproval, but after a few seconds, she thought she had no choice but to agree. All right, but no way are we losing any pony else to that darn dare varmint, she said firmly. Don't worry, we won't, Starlight added, guiding her growing dread with a weakly brave face. It wasn't hard for every pony to see through the fake veil of confidence, yet none of them argued as they finished setting up the trap and blocking off all means of escape, but the ones that they wanted. Then Twilight ushered them all into position. Do be careful, dear, Rarity said as Starlight gulped and moved down the rubble and under the middle of the grand room from the balcony to the right. Twilight regarded the whole trap carefully. Every pony ready? She called out. A series of uncertain acknowledgments and responses followed, as every pony locked eyes on the shivering pink unicorn between them. All right. Every pony be quiet. Starlight, you make yourself as noticeable as possible. Twilight instructed. Swallowing her fear, Starlight stood tall, her horn glowing as bright as it could as she cried out into the darkness. Both Twilight and Rarity faded from sight as their horns went out. Meanwhile, the glow of Starlight's own horn grew to its brightest peak. There was only one place she wanted to look, both in terror and anticipation as she gazed off into the only place the thing could enter the room. Every bone in her quivering body felt as if it had turned to ice, the chill magnified by the beads of cold sweat clinging to her coat and mane. Her ears twitched and fidgeted like an insect's relentless wings, and her skin crawled as if infested by seeking maggots. Then the smell of rot caught her nose, and even in the intense glow of her magic she saw it. A brief flash of neon blue light pulsed across the darkness directly ahead. A barbed coil of fear lanced through her, in an instant she fell silent, tensing so much so that she was barely able to move anything. Her horn glow receded back into a faint hue as the thing's blue light scurried around the dark hall. It was almost as if it were studying her with a keen intelligence that bellied its animalistic nature. Its movements were unsettlingly cautioned and calculative, and for a moment a hint of doubt regarding Twilight's assumptions on its instinct bloomed in Starlight's terrified mind. She wasn't given time for second thoughts, however. As the thing paused, what she could guess was a few inches from the room's entrance. Whatever was out there in the gloom, indistinguishable by only the neon blue light that danced like liquid lightning across its sleek form, looked at her with an eyeless stare. A bright frill of magnificent light waved and flickered, like a light from a blissful setting sun hitting a tranquil lake, all the while emanating a rattling sound similar to that of desert snakes. The thing shifted, its deadly beauty moving within. This time its movements were slow again, as the light pulsed along its invisible body slowly to a deceitfully calm pace. Despite her fear, the violent shivering that racked her body, Starlight couldn't take her eyes off that vague shape. She strived to peer into it, as if hoping her gaze could blast away the darkness and give her a clearer view of the thing beyond a simple flowing patter of vibrant blue lights. Its deadly magnificence almost demanded she do so, calling her like a moth to a flame as it flickered and swam within the pitch darkness. Then, whatever it was, uttered a distinctively loud hiss, and below the crown of light something dismissive trailed down from a set of vaguely visible fanged jaws. In that moment, Starlight knew one thing. It was no specter or ghost. It was something very real and tangible, and it looked right into her with an eyeless stare, unclouded by pity, sympathy, or remorse. She could only see an instinctive drive in the murderous beauty, a pure and flawless drive. Yet that brief exchange of glances lasted only seconds before the thing gave another low growl, and the fan-like frill of rattling spines flared about it. 
Small bolts of arcane lightning flashed between the glowing spires as they twitched violently. Then, in a flash of bright blue light, an echoing rattle, the thing darted upwards and blasted a eltritch lightning and vanished into the darkness. Without thought, Starlight staggered back as the thing magically darted across the other side of the room, blinking from space to space with a formidable grace as its light began to pulse faster and faster. Where is it? Twilight called out from the darkness as Applejack erupted into a fit of curses about messing with something they knew absolutely nothing about. All the while, Starlight's eyes never left the darting light. They struggled to keep up, but never did the thing escape her wary sight. Then, with one final blink of magical light, it appeared right beside her, and its shimmering form recoiled in a blinding flash. Now! She cried loudly, throwing her shield as vibrant blue whips latched against her with more ferocity than lightning itself. The force of the rapid strike shattered the magical barrier like glass. Yet there was another purple flash, and within a millisecond, starlight appeared beside twilight, and the creature's blow tore a deep gash to the stone where she'd been standing no more than seconds before. Without a word, Twilight pulled on the pillar with her magic as the blue glow of Rarity's own enveloped the other end, and the whole thing came down on top of the glowing beast with a loud crash. The beast attempted to dart away, but instead gave a painful shriek as it was pinned in place. That horrific-sounding sound rang in every pony's ears as it tore at their minds like a set of rending blades. A bright flash of lightning afforded each of them a glimpse at some large, black mass struggling under the rubble. Then it fell back into darkness, and only a vibrant glow illuminated its thrashing attempts to break free. We got it! We got it! Twilight's horn was ready. Now, this is for my friends, you monster! She cried angrily as a bolt of lavender fire lanced out and struck the mass of struggling light. Wait, Twilight, we don't, called Applejack from somewhere within the gloom. But it was all too late. The magical bolt struck the creature, evident by the thang's agonized shriek. Yet the call was followed by a horrified scream from Rarity as the creature's scorched wounds spew out a black torrent of slime before cauterizing. In the flashes of the frantic show, the white mare could be seen toppling back from the thrashing beast as the black substance coated her left side almost entirely. Meanwhile, the creature's painful shrieks became angry hisses as its glowing frills flared and flickered, allowing it to magically blink flee of the trap and come charging right at twilight and starlight. Stuck between the invisible beast and the screams of their friend, both mares were caught completely off guard. Starlight fell to the floor by instinct as the flickering beast smacked Twilight and Spike aside with a set of massive clawed limbs. The whole creature uh, passed right over them in a rapid retreat, before disappearing across the wall and sneaking back into the darkness with an angry fit of hissing clicks. Starlight opened her eyes to see Twilight lift her head, forehead and horn marred by a deep gash as blood ran down her face. Spike sat up behind her, thankfully less injured as he sat up and shook his head. All Starla could think was that she was alive, dazed but alive. The same could not be said for their screaming friend, however. Both ponies shot up as fast as they could and looked down at the remains of the fallen pillar. Applejack was even quicker to rush to Rarity's side, and without thought, Starlight levitated herself down to join her. The moment she did so, she couldn't help but regret it as she looked in horror at Rarity writhing on the floor. Applejack cautiously crept round to her struggling friend's far side, careful to avoid the dark goo slowly eating away at her. All Rarity did was scream and call out to go home like a terrified foal. Applejack called frantically as she dragged the unicorn away from the bubbling pool of black liquid and did her best to remain calm. Rarity's thrashing made that very difficult, but finally Starlight shook her head free of her initial terror and jumped forwards. The raincoat! Take it off! Most of the stuff went on that! She called, urgently, her magic gripping the untouched side of the purple attire as Applejack cautiously took it in her hooves. Now nah, hold still, Rarity! Just hold still! The farm pony tried to reassure, but as the blackness sank in, Rarity only convulsed more and more. 
Then she started screaming as the fused half of the raincoat peeled away from her skin like sticky toffee. Just like with Pinkie Pie, the stuff was quickly beginning to spread across her body, twisting her limbs into grotesque sores and blisters as she squirmed. Applejack, stop! Please stop, I... Rarity began, her screams racked by a fit of wet gasps and gags. It hurts. I... I just want... No. No, Rarity. You just stay right there. Don't worry. You're gonna get through this, and you're gonna get home. Y'all gonna get back to Ponyville to see your sister and every pony else, I promise. Applejack said, her tone more of a desperate plea than a promise. Darn it, Starlight. Help me. We need to move her. Starlight's magical grip on the raincoat became slippery, just as it had done before when she was forced to let go of the coat and watch it sink into the slimy black bubble that one half of her friend was quickly becoming. She struggled to keep herself from vomiting at the horrific sight as Rarity began to thrash even more, black goo bubbling up on her limbs as it slowly fused her to the floor. Crying, Applejack could do nothing more but watch as the unicorn was slowly getting encased in the goo. Moments later, the sound of hoof steps sounded behind the pair as Twilight finally approached. The Alicorn froze the moment she saw her friend slowly decaying. Then she jumped as Applejack to Jap Applejack's aid, only to pause again as a distinctively wet hiss echoed in the gloom. Applejack, we have to get out of here. The thing still knows we're here, and it knows some pony's injured, Twilight said frantically. No. No, 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 no. Please. Please don't leave me. Rarity partially begged. I'd never even considered it, Rarity. I promise. Twilight assured her, as Applejack did. Get back, Applejack. Starlight, help me lift her. You're gonna have to use those two legs, Rarity. Twilight quickly added, as both she and Starlight braved the poisonous slime to reduce the unicorn's weight enough for her to stagger on only two legs. We need to get her out of here. Back to Ponyville Hospital or Sakura. Any pony that can help. Twilight stated firmly before motioning for every pony to move on. All the while, the distant light of their attacker flashed in the gloom as it steadily stalked them. Twilight was right about one thing. It knew where they were, and it was hunting them with a newfound rage. The fact that Rarity could move no more than a few hoofsteps at a time as the slime slowly began to eat its way at her legs and spread across her body didn't help. Eventually, she was begging for rest of them to stop. I... I just can't go on. I just, I just want to go home. To my dresses. To Sweetie Belle. I... She murmured. Yet pain and exhaustion had stolen most of her voice as she began to heave and retch. Applejack looked at her friend with an expression as hard as stone as Rarity slumped down against the wall. In the end, it was no pony that said anything but Spike. The baby dragon hopped down from Twilight's back and moved to the still white side of Rarity's face. Spike? My Spikey Wikey? She asked in a frail whimper, looking at him with her one good eye as a tear rolled down her quivering cheek. Then her words were swallowed by a wet gasp and gurgling in the back of her throat as she convulsed violently. Without thought, Twilight heaved Spike back in her magic as the dark substance poured into Rarity's throat and began to spew outwards in a black fountain of sick bile. Every pony was forced back as the unicorn thrashed and squirmed all the more, as if she were trying to drag her friends into the blackness. Then there was a certain, sudden flash, and within seconds a neon blue coil wrapped around her neck and dragged her upwards, into the darkness before any pony could react. Calling Rarity's name like a filly for their mother, Applejack charged at the wall. Yet she wasn't able to stop, Step in the black goo as the creature blinked away, disappearing into the darkness along with her friend. The last any pony heard of Rarity was a muffled scream, then a silence broken only by the distant sound of thunder falling back into the dark ruins.